Certain poet poem associations are indisputable and the Raven and Edgar Allan Poe is most certainly one of them. According to the Poetry Foundation, Charles Baudelaire noted in his introduction to the French edition of the Raven, it is indeed the poem of the sleeplessness of despair. It lacks nothing, neither the fever of ideas nor the violence of colors, nor sickly reasoning nor reveling terror, nor even the bizarre gaiety of suffering which makes it more terrible. The poem narrates the story of a distraught lover, someone that's grieving their dead soulmate, burying themselves in the books of the library when a mysterious raven comes calling. The poem then narrates the strange interaction between the man and the raven, one that's most certainly filled with terror, suffering and fevered thoughts. Some poems are meant to be read aloud or listened to at the very least. A part of the joy lies in the pulsing rhythm, the pauses, the lines so long they make you gasp. And I cannot recommend the reading available on the Poetry Foundation's website enough. The poem is a rather long ballad written in 18 stanzas of six lines each, with the lines themselves being long, but they follow a regular rhyme scheme, A, B, C, B, B, B. There is substantial use of repetition, epistrophe in specific, with the words nevermore and Lenore. The narrator was in a library one December midnight, seeking consolation from the many books that lined its shelves, when he hears a faint tapping at the door. His many attempts to convince himself that it's only a visitor fall flat, and his plea to them fall on deaf ears, before he ventures towards the door and finds little else but darkness awaiting him on the other side. He stands there, deep into that darkness peering, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. The dream of seeing Lenore again. He whispers her name and the silence whispers it back to him before he relents to the gnawing instinct within him and walks towards the window. Maybe it's the wind, or maybe it's a magnificent looking raven that flies in with an air of nobility and perches itself on a statue of the bust of Pallas, a Greek symbol of wisdom. A raven, whose very sight is so unlikely the man cannot help his face rearranging into a faint smile. Or not, because what if the bird came from a realm of hell? Every imploring question is met with one answer and one answer only. The raven's name. If the bird will leave him like the ones that came before, if the raven and its old dark soul will help purge him of his memories of Lenore, if he will ever find balm for his grief, if he will clasp Lenore's hand in the afterlife, and lastly, if he leave never to return, never more. The experience has left him dead like a sword was impaled into a festering wound and he lies on the floor, the raven's eyes piercing through to wake up never more. This part of the video is entirely optional and will be spoilery if at all you plan on reading this book so you're free to skip over. The supernatural elements in the poem, which are a plenty, must not take away from the deeper underlying currents of confusion and strange sorrow. Much like how Gansey and Adam and Ronan and eventually Blue's search for the hidden tomb of Glendower shouldn't take away from their own reasons. The seeking of relief from sheer and literal existential dread, of solace from domestic violence, of love when you're left often, of purpose when you're different. Gansey's belief system, otherwise steeped in rationale, would tell him otherwise, as would the world, that no living human being ever yet was blessed with a second life. And yet, what does it say of the impact of our own lived, deeply personal experiences that he went as far as he did? It's a scary space to find yourself, to be seized by an unnerving need to find answers. But it's also a space you can't look away from once you've been there, much like the narrator and the unrelenting raven. What does it mean to seek answers of the world? It's spending nights with the Henrietta sky, hanging over your window, wondering when, if you'll meet the man that gave you your second life. It's spending nights with the church ceilings hanging overhead, wondering why you can bring fledgling birds from your head and what else can pervade the living, breathing present. It's spending nights with the double wide walls closing in on your peripheral sight, wondering when, if you can dare to claim the world as your own. And in all that, it's also wandering through the imagination and waiting for it to become something more, something real. But perhaps we must also realize that in some sense, we're all there wandering, fearing, doubting, dreaming. Is the future darkness? Perhaps not, but there don't seem to be any lights either. And most unfortunately, no Welsh kings either.